In this video, we'll create a reusable component in Angular which integrates with the Google Places autocomplete service and gives us back the place result. Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and a front-end engineer and welcome back to my channel. This is the first part of my series where we build up a Journey Planner app in Angular with the Google Maps APIs. In the Journey Planner app, we'll be able to enter our from and to places and get a directions map so we can plan our journey, along with photos of the places to confirm that's where we want to go. Now in this first part, we will build up the Google Places autocomplete component so we can select our places for the journey. So let's get started. Now let's start by setting up our project. So first, we won't have any modules because I'll be exclusively using standalone components here, along with inline styles and templates. For more information about exactly how and why I'm doing this, check out a separate video which I've linked above. But if you're familiar with standalone components and inline styles and templates, just carry on. So we have a new app here called Angular Journey Planner. So let's install some packages that we need. Now first we need the Angular Material components. So we're going to add ng add Angular Material. Great, Angular Material is installed. The next thing we want to install is the Angular Google Maps, which is the official Google Maps library for Angular. I know you might also be thinking about AGM Map, which was a very popular library, but it's now outdated. So I prefer using Angular Google Maps, which is officially released by the Angular team. So let's install this like this, npm install at Angular Google Maps, save it, great. So Angular Google Maps has been installed. Now that's all we need for now. Okay, now next let's create our place autocomplete component then. So we are going to do nggc and we're going to make it into a components folder and we're going to call it place autocomplete. Great, our component has been added here. And when we look into it, it's a standalone component with inline styles and templates. Now let's add some template and we will use the mat form field with an outline appearance. So to do that, we are first going to import our mat form field module and the mat input module. We're going to add imports for the bo for both at the top and then we're just going to use the add all missings option here. So with this imported, we can now add it to our template here. So let's create a new mat form field, okay? And within it, we are going to add an input which we are going to give a directive of mat input as well, okay? Um, as I said, I'm going to give it the appearance of outline, which is a slightly different appearance from the normal text box, but will be good for our app. And uh, in the input field, we also want to add a placeholder, but this will be, this will get from a variable which we want to add as an input to this class. Great, so we, have, we have added our input and we're just going to put in placeholder here. Great, so we have created a basic autocom autocomplete component. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to add Google places autocomplete to it. Now adding the Google places autocomplete to an input field is easy but we need to get a reference to the input itself and for that we need to add a template variable to the input field. So here we are going to call it input field and to add it here and then right before the input we will add a view child decorator. We're going to import it from angular core and we are going to give input field here which is the name of our variable and to call it input field as well here and this is going to be our element ref. We're going to give a definite assignment assertion to this, okay? So next, we are going to initialize the autocomplete service on this field in our ng after view init lifecycle. Why do we need to do that in the ng after view init? Because uh, it is only here that we will get this input field reference available, okay? So here we are going to first create an autocomplete variable and this will be of the type of google.maps.places.autocomplete or it could be undefined which would which it would be when initially when it's not initialized okay and here what we are going to do then is that we are going to initialize the autocomplete this will be a new google.maps.places.autocomplete this is going to take uh, as the first input our input field which will be this dot input field dot native element. This is going to bind the autocomplete to our field here. Okay, now let's see what will happen when we select a place from the drop down in the autocomplete. So for that, we will need to add an event handler for place changed. So let us add it to the autocomplete here, autocomplete dot add listener. And the listener's name that we want here is place changed. This will happen when you select a place in the drop down or you press enter on the field and we're going to handle it inside of this function. Okay, so um, we know that the place has changed here, but how do we get the place itself, the place details itself? So what we're going to uh, do is we're going to use the autocompletes get place function. Now this get place function gives us the place that's selected by sending a place details request to Google and getting the details back. So here we are going to do constant place is equals to this dot autocomplete dot get place. Okay. Uh, 
so we get a lot of data in this uh, place detail in, in, in this place details result uh, so let's first just um, try to see what details we get here um, and for now let's just put it in all in a console.log statement so we can test this out great now let's move on to testing this okay now in order to test the uh, places autocomplete integration we also need to add the script to load the google maps javascript api this we need to do in our index.ht now this is required before using any of the google map services or even the map itself so let's add that to our index.html and i have a link here uh, in which you can see how to actually generate the api keys which we will need to use in our um, Google Maps JavaScript API script. So you can see this, uh, you can see the script link here, but I also have it copied here. So I will copy this in and I'm going to show you where to exactly do that. So right after the last link here, uh, I'm going to add this. And as you can see, API key here is uh, given as a placeholder. Now you will need to get an API key from Google Cloud Platform for this and you need to enable the Google Maps APIs on this API key. Now for this, you will have to enable billing as well by providing a valid credit card and all of the um, steps that you need to do that is given on this page. This link I will post either on the video itself or in the description in the video. But don't worry, it's not going to charge you till you use more than $200 uh, in a month. Uh, $200 worth of credit is free for every month. So this is sufficient for testing purposes. Uh, so go ahead and use this option if you're just using this to test out this tutorial. So once you have this API key ready, just put it here in the API key section here and also make sure that you have included the libraries places query string here as well because we need to import the places uh, JavaScript as well here. Great. And then you'll be good to go. Okay, let's go ahead now and now let's import the autocomplete component in our app component so that we can show it in the UI. So let's go back to our app component and let's import this in our let's also first import the common module because it's uh, it contains our common ngf and ng4 we might need it and let's also import our place autocomplete component here now we are able to do this uh, um, because it's a standalone component otherwise we always need to import the module let's also include a mat toolbar here because we need the mat toolbar so for that we need to import it in this way angular material toolbar and let's update the import from here so first we are going to add a mat toolbar here at the top and let's call it my journey planner and below that uh, we are going to add a div which we are going to give a class of contain let's add a style for the container here it's a simple style and this will be some padding of about 24 pixels here okay and in this container we are going to now add our place autocomplete okay this is our new component component here uh, and let's just test it out like this and see how it shows up so we are going to do ng serve open now and see what happens let's split our screen here great so we have our journey planner just one thing uh, which is missing here is we need to do color primary here so we can a good primary color here uh, we have our place autocomplete showing here now let's test out whether we can we can actually get the places that we want so we are going to enter here for example let's enter here london bridge and yes we get the drop down here so the autocomplete integration work and let's see whether we get the place details back and yes, we can see that we get uh, the place details response back. And as you can see, we have a lot of different um, things that is returned here and a lot of things we don't need. So the next thing that we are going to do is to convert this into our own place search result object. So let's create a result object with this information and let's go back to our code and then go back to the auto component here and we are going to declare an interface here right about here we're going to call it the place search result now this place search result um, will have first of all the address this will be a mandatory field this will be the value that we get in the um, um, input box here that is london bridge london uk this will be the whole result then we'll have the location and this will be of a type of google maps lat long this we'll need for our directions renderer then we also have image URL. Now this is going to be a string and this we'll, we will need to show in our place card. Then we'll have the icon URL. This is the icon that we need um, to identify the uh, what the place is. And then we also have a name description here, sort of a, an identifier for that, um, for that place and which we can show in our card, okay? So this is the structure of the data that we want to return from this uh, component. And we're going to populate this uh, right now and right after our place changed uh, in event handler or right inside of it. So we're going to get create a result. This will be a place search result. Okay. And uh, inside of here first, we will have the address. Now the address will be the same thing that is in the input field. So we're just going to use the value in this field. 
which will be the native element dot value next we'll have the name we are going to put in place dot name okay and then we have the location the location we get from place dot we get the, from a geometry and from location great okay then we have an image url now for the image url we'll add it in a bit but let's first add the icon url which we also get from the place directly so we have our result but we don't have the image url yet now for the image url uh, if you see in the data that we have so if we open this again for example if you can see the data that we have and if you can see the images here the photos array so it comes into it comes in a form of an array and in each array we get the height and we get the width um, and we get a function called get url in which from which we can get that url so we don't get it directly so we need to call the get url function to get the photo back now so let's create a separate function for this in which we can handle um, this fetching from the get photos and so let's create a new function here which we are going to call as get photo url and this is going to take the place which will be google dot uh, google dot map dot places dot result place result and it will also be undefined and we are going to return the string url or we are going to return undefined in case there are no photos because that's also that's also a possibility now here we are going to return um, a condition we are going to first check a condition here so we are going to check whether the place has any photos or not because it might be empty and also whether the place dot photos dot length is greater than zero that means if it has at least one photo and if it does then what we are going to do is we are just going to return place dot photos the first one and we are going to do get url now this get url function is going to give us um, a photo of a specific size and we can specify that size here we want want a maximum width here of 500 pixels. We don't, we don't want more than that because that would be too much of a data and we only need it for the card display. And if we don't have this, uh, if, we, if we don't have any photos, then we are just going to return undefined, All right? So we have here the get photos and let's let's go back and add our image URL here. URL and we are going to just give this dot get URL and we're going to give our play. All right. So we have our data here. Now let's look at our, look at our data formatted uh, and let's just log it in and test this out. Okay, so if you're going to test this out here now and let's enter something else. So let's enter London Eye for example. And if we can see, okay, we get this address, we get this object back, which is a place search result. We get our location, we get the address, the icon URL, the image URL name. For the image URL, let's test this out. And so let's copy and paste it in a browser and see what got here. So we copy and we paste here and let's also remove Move the, the quotes here that we got and let's just see whether we get the image so yes we get the image of London Eye so our result formation works now okay so the last thing that is left now is to send the result back to our parent component so that we can use the value to show a card or render the directions in the map now let's add an output decorator with the place change name below this input we are going to add an output let's import it from angular core and let's call it place change this will be a new event emitter and it will have a type of place result play search result and it's going to be an and here instead of console.log we're just going to send this uh, to the uh, event emitter so we're going to emit this value like this okay so now let's go back to our app.component and we're going to uh, we're going to add a bit of code now um, to handle our data uh, which is going back so we're going to add pla place changed here and we're going to add a new variable here in app component let's call it the from value which will be the value of the from uh, place that we need to store this is going to be a place search result and let's give it place search result or it will be undefined let's assign this to the value that we get from here okay which is which comes in the dollar event, which is the parameters that we get from this. Now let's also add a simple layout, which shows the name and the image on the UI. So we can see if we are getting our value back correctly. Uh, I just, I'm just going to copy something in here. So I'm just going to copy this. This will be from value. And we're going to use the name and the image URL and to see the, whether we have getting the data correctly here. Okay. And we can test this out. Great. So let's enter uh, some uh, new place. Let's see, uh, let's do Imperial College, uh, Alma Mater. So let's enter Imperial College in London, but nothing happens. Let's click here and there. Okay. Yes. When we click here and there, we get the name and the uh, photo URL uh, as you want it. Now, the reason for this is because of change detection, it is not being run when the output is emitted. Now, this can be a bit confusing thing for beginners, but I've learned this through trial and error. So the reason this happens 
is because the places auto complete event handlers they don't run in the ng zone so if we go back to our place change event handler this code is actually run outside of angular zone or the ng zone so in this case but it's a very easy fix uh, all we have to do is include ng zone in the constructor here okay we are going to do private ng zone and we are going to just in the code that we want to run in the ng zone we are going to do ng zone dot run and we are going to simply shift this code there this will ensure that angular node that something has changed and it needs to run change detection again okay so now let's test this out again and this time let's add a very high profile place let's say the white house okay oh yes so we get the white house in all its glory and its name and we get it instantly so that means the change detection is being run correct so that's it for creating a places auto complete component for our app next we will reuse this for the two location as well and then use those values for the places card that we will show plus the directions rendering on the map so stay tuned everyone i hope you liked this part if you did please subscribe to my channel for the next parts as we complete our journey planner thanks for watching bye bye